Hello and welcome, I'm Arumba, thank you for joining me. This is Arumba's Agenda on April the 20th, 2016. Quite the coincidence, has nothing to do with that date in any way whatsoever. So, uh, before we dive right into this, I want to just mention a couple things. So, there's going to be some background video uh, while I do this agenda. Rather than do, like, the thing where I capture my uh, Excel spreadsheet, you know, which is a little bit maybe not as engaging, I'm going to play a, a game here that Quill18 made, which is pretty fun and, and awesome, really, considering he made it in just two days for something called Ludum Dare, which is uh, it's this thing that they do a couple times a year where coders get together and they, like, have, like, a... A uh, set of rules and like a theme that they follow and they create a game over the course of two or three days And so he made this game. It's called dr. Deckenstein an adventure in severed parts There will be a link in the description down below if you want to go check it out. It's free to play and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. So Anyway, uh, what do we want to talk about in this agenda first things first? We have uh, some excellent hearts of iron 4 music on in the background as well and uh I'm very, very excited about Hearts Fine 4. People have been asking me on a number of different locations, like Reddit, or Twitch, or Twitter, even in comment sections saying like, Hey, are you going to play Hearts of Iron 4? Hey, are you going to play Stellars? So just to put all that to, to rest, yes, I'm, I'm going to play both of them, uh, prodigiously, like a lot, like, like it's going to become like the only thing I do for the next couple months. So yes, there will be absolute boatloads of Stellars and Hearts of Iron 4 content over the next couple months, but, um, before that starts, before that happens, uh, Stellaris comes out on May 9th. I'm going to be traveling to Berkshire, England, for a press event for Stellaris in about two weeks. It's very likely that I'm going to have some pre-release footage from the event, and there's also a very good chance that I may get early access to Stellaris for my own personal use to, like, prepare for the event. I'm not certain if they're going to have an embargo or if I'm going to be uh, restricted from using the local copy, the preview copy that they give me for um, for any kind of like Let's Play series, but I'm most certainly going to play the hell out of it if I do get it so that I can get good, right? I, I want to be able to put up the best quality videos possible for, for Stellaris at the very start of the campaign. Now, I want to talk about history here for a second. A couple of years, two and a half years ago now was when EU4 came out, and I remember back then... They, they created a preview build that you could get. It was a demo, and you could only play for like 20 years, if I remember correctly. Um, and you couldn't save the game, and you couldn't reload, and there was like a lot of restrictions on it. But I played that thing so, so, so much. I tried to get as good as I could, and I still sucked when I played as Portugal. That's why we had two Portugal series. We had Portugal, and then there was proper Portugal, and both of them I was bad at. I want to try to be as good as I can because I don't want to be bad. Um... I want to be an expert at the game, even though it's brand new, and uh, try to do the best that I can to, to know what I'm talking about, and at the same time, I do want to discover things together, you know, and I don't want it to just be me playing a game that I'm already bored with or anything, but um, that is something that I'm going to try to do well at. I want to play as well as I can. So that's coming up soon. Something else that's uh, fairly significant that I, I have not yet uh, announced officially on YouTube is that Patreon, the uh, Patreon page, is now up and running. If you want to head over there, there's going to be a link in the description down below. It's called uh, http colon slash slash patreon.com slash arumba. Now, we had 99% of the feedback. I did a poll on a stream and then also via Twitter, and 99% of people said that it was a good thing to do. You should do it. There's no reason not to do it. 20% of people said they would support it actively. 80% or so said that, hey, it's a good idea, but I, I'm not going to support you on it. I mean, that's fine. I'm not trying to pressure people to do it. The only reason I did it is because people said I should, and because 99% feedback is a pretty high statistical value there. So, the primary reason that, that I did it is that reason, that people said I should, and that they were supportive. But also, I want to give people an opportunity to do a very, very low-cost way to maybe absolve themselves of any guilt, if they feel any whatsoever, for using Adblock. You know, Adblock is becoming incredibly prevalent today. And, uh, you know, if you want to use Adblock, that's fine. I use Adblock. I disable Adblock on, on YouTube. There's a couple ways you can do it. If you use Chrome, you can enable specific YouTube pa channels to, to not be blocked. And that way you can still have Adblock on for all your other browsing and stuff. So you're safe. Um, you're not getting pop-ups and annoying ads and stuff, but, um, you can still, you know, watch the TrueView ads or whatever they're called to, to support the channels that you like. One thing to, to always consider is like, hey, this channel is always going to be free, but, um, for you, but it, is my uh, it's my business. This is what I do for a living. And if you do use AdBlock, then that is basically just taking away revenue. Um, 
On an individual basis, it's very, very small. But when a huge statistical percentage of people start using Adblock, it really does start to harm things. I remember when I started doing YouTube about three and a half years ago, um, ad revenue was much higher than, uh, than it is today. The CPM, cost per meal, or like how much money is paid for a thousand ad impressions, has come down a lot, almost half since 2013. And that's, that's crazy. Um, so, you know, a big part of that is I think that YouTube is also trying to move towards this uh, new cards system, which is supposed to help out with engagement and stuff, but it's really primarily for like phones and tablets, and I don't really cater to that audience, so I'm not really doing the cards system that they want me to do. And, and anyway, basically, long story short, if you want to show your support, Patreon's going to be available. Even if you just pledge the bare minimum $1 a month on Patreon, then you have complete absolution for any any guilt you might feel for this, for having an ad block program. Because that $1 is more than you would have earned for any channel. Um, you'd have to watch like 2,000 videos or 1,000 videos or something in a single month for the ad revenue to be equivalent to a dollar. So on a, on a single person basis, it's very minor, but, you know, add it up and it makes a big difference. So, yeah, please do support me if you want to. I really would really appreciate it. It also takes some of the pressure off to put out tons of content that may not be as high quality. You know, it's it's possible that um, if there's enough support on Patreon, maybe I can do more editing. I can I can try to get better at games before I start putting videos up on them. I know one of the trademarks of the channel basically is high frequency content, and I, I don't want to stop doing that. But at the same time, there is a lot of pressure to continue releasing videos, even if um, either my heart's not in it or if I am not good at the game because I just have to put out content. You know, it's how I pay for my kids' college fund, and that's how I pay for the mortgage, and I've got to do it. So um, I'm not trying to, like, I'm not, you know, on a soapbox or anything right now and trying to um, cry or beg or anything like that. I'm just saying, hey, you know, if you want to do it, that's cool. If you don't, that's fine too. Again, the channel's always going to be free. If you if you just want to run ad block and be a jerk, that's cool too. I'm not going to get too upset about it. That's some percentage of people are going to do that. But um, that option is there for you if you're looking for it. I do intend on making a personal, like, Patreon-specific video. But I've been procrastinating because uh, reasons. I just don't want to... I just don't like editing. I don't want to do it yet. <laughs> but I will eventually. Um... And then beyond that, you know, a couple months from now, well, a month and a half from now, actually, is, is going to be the Hearts of Iron 4 release, which I am incredibly excited about. I can't wait to play that game again. I'm also really, really excited to see the guys over at Paradox. Um, truth, truth be told, the Paradox Con event from 2015 was probably the highlight of my year last year. I, I really enjoyed going over there and hanging out with those guys. I got to go see them twice. I got to go to Paradox Con in February. That was the first event that I ever went to for a company. Um while doing YouTube. You know, I'm used to going on conventions, going on trips. I, I'm, I was a peak performer back in the insurance industry, but um, being invited to Paradox events was really cool and uh, got to meet those guys, really enjoyed it. They're amazing guys, mostly guys. There's a couple of girls, but mostly guys. It was a lot of fun. And then I got to go to an event in June where I played Hearts of Iron 4 and that was awesome too. And now I get to go to the Stellaris event and that's awesome too. So, can't wait. But um, I want to... I'm gonna, okay, I'm, I'm gonna dive into some territory here that I'm not sure exactly how deep I want to go, just because I, I feel like I want to talk about it, but at the same time, I don't know how much would be too much information. Um, so I just want to talk about it. You may have noticed that there's some videos that have been missing in the, in the schedule, and part of that is because um, I'm a bit tired. I've been very tired the last month. And the reason for that is because I am on an antidepressant. Um, I identify personality-wise as a INTJ, and that is just kind of the way my personality works. I tend to go through bouts of depression every couple, two to three years, and they're pretty severe. I, I work best when I'm doing something new and I'm trying to win, when I am trying to beat people, when I am competitive. And I've reached this point with YouTube where things are pretty good, pretty stable, and I don't really have that same pressure to, like, I've got to do more, got to do more, got to do more, that drives me. And so I tend to slip into this bout of depression, and I've never taken an antidepressant before, now I am, and it's doing nothing, absolutely nothing. I feel no different whatsoever, except tired. That's the only thing I feel. I'm taking a, it's a drug called Citalopram, 
and one of the side effects is uh, fatigue and Jesus man it knocks me on my ass like I will get as much sleep as I can possibly get and I have that heavy f that weight that feeling in the back of my eyes like I haven't slept enough even though I got enough sleep and I just feel tired all the time and it drives me nuts anyway um, so you know I don't know I, I want to try to break that cycle in some ways I feel like that personality type is uh, an advantage but I'm tired. I'm tired of feeling um, unhappy, feeling nothing, feeling uh, apathy, which is, is a very common feeling for me. I just don't care. I just don't care about anything. Um, things that normally make me happy don't make me happy. And I honestly think that a lot of that's been coming coming through. Even even though I try to hide it and I try not to let it affect work, I think it's it's evident. And you know, someone had commented recently saying, hey, you sound really happy when you're playing Dota. And I, I do, because... Dota has always really kind of been one of my escape wait my, my methods of escape, right? One of the ways that I used to escape in the past is I would play Footman Frenzy or I'd play Dota and I just I just play this game, I play it over and over and over and over again. And it's like I turn my mind off, I disconnect my mind from my body, and I just get so so sunk into this thing that all my problems just kind of go away. And it for it's a it's a release, you know, but at the same time. I don't really feel good <laughs> at the end of it, you know, it's like, it's just like, it stops the pain, you know, but, um, for some reason I, 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 I don't know, I, I slip, I, that's where I like to go. Um, and, uh, and another place that I go is I used to get really, really drunk and I don't do that very often. I haven't had anything to drink in a couple months. I tend to do that. I'll go like a couple months or even years without drinking and then, and then I'll get just hammered. I'll just get really, really drunk. And I don't like that. I don't want to do that. That's why I'm trying to medicate. I didn't do it, of course, without seeing a doctor. I've got a psychiatrist who's working with it. I've actually seen him tomorrow, coincidentally. Um, it's been one month to the day since I started taking this medication. And, you know, I just wanted to talk about it. I just want to see what you guys' thoughts were. See if anyone else can understand where I'm coming from. And maybe maybe this will help some people. Maybe other people feel the way that I do. And, and hopefully I find a solution that works for me. I don't know that this medication is going to do it. Maybe the dosage is too low. Maybe it's the wrong type. Maybe I didn't, a different type. Maybe it's not depression. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's, who knows? Who, who has any idea what the hell it is? Maybe the psychiatrist does. I sure hope he does. But then again, 50% of psychiatrists are below average. So you never know. Maybe he's just an idiot. I don't think so. I think he's actually pretty good. Because um, I, you know, I tried to find the best guy I could in the area. Anyway, um, what else is there to say? Uh, I don't know. I want to let the video continue so that you can see the end of this uh, this run that I did in his game, but um, kind of getting low on, on things to say. Nothing else that I really want to touch on. The music in this game is going to be gorgeous, by the way. This is the music for Hearts Fire and 4, not for Ludum Dare's, uh, Quill's Ludum Dare game. But this music is amazing. Can't wait to, can't wait to play the game. Andreas Woldetoft. Amazing dude. I can't wait to meet him. I almost had an opportunity to meet the composer for all of the, all the Paradox music. But he didn't go to the event. There was this event in ParadoxCon where we went into this bunker and it was like a, it was like a Hearts of Iron 4 themed dinner and we were in a bunker. So cool being in an actual like military bunker and we got to go around and like see a bunch of history type stuff and then we had like a, a history test and I got to be, I was on the same team as uh, Fred Wester, the CEO of Paradox and he knew like everything. It's amazing how much Europeans know about history. Like, <laughs> you want to know? About history? Go talk to a European. I swear, the education system in the United States has got nothing on European history. Like, they they know all kinds of crap about every war. I, I did horrible in that, that history test that we were doing. It was, it was a game, right? It wasn't a test. It was, like, fun. For fun. And there was some drinking involved, and so everyone was having a great time. But anyway, Andreas was supposed to go to that thing, and he, he didn't go for some reason. He wasn't there. So I didn't get to meet him. I'm hoping he'll be at the Stellaris event. I doubt it. It's just a specific one game, but um, I would love to meet that guy. I love his music. It's just gorgeous. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, let's see, on another note, I, uh, I've decided, I think, to stop playing, uh, that other game that I've been playing, which, what was it, it was called, uh, I gotta look it up real quick, so every single window is open, uh, it's called Stardew Valley, not really getting great views on it, and it's fun for me, but it's really not that engaging. I don't know. All I really want to do these days is just play Dota. 
I just want to crawl into my hole <laughs> and just play Dota. And, and that's a big part of uh, what's going on. You know, the next couple of weeks I'm expecting I'm probably not going to play. I don't want to play as many games. I don't want to work as much as normal because I just want to try to try to get out of my funk before Stellaris comes out and before this Paradox event so that I can hopefully be at my best and do well uh, at the event and, and when the game is released. But, you know, it's tough. You know, depression sucks. It really sucks. It's so rough because physically there's nothing wrong with me, right? Well, there is on a chemical level, I guess, but I uh, just don't feel anything. I feel miserable. Like I, it's the apathy. It's the lack of feeling that, that really drives me nuts. I used to be able to sit down and just like play a game for six hours and love every minute of it. And now, and it's not just based on the job, right? I don't think it's just like, hey, you work in this now. And so you... You know, you, when you turn your hobby into a career, then you stop enjoying it. I don't think it's that. Um, because games are always fun. But, anyway. Like, we're about to beat the dragon. The dragon. The end game boss. This is a really cool game that Quill made. I can't believe how little time it took him to make something like this. Nice card game. He didn't get any time to put music into it. He said if he had one more day, he would have been able to do a lot more polish on it. A lot of people in his comments were saying, hey, you should you should finish this game up, put it on Steam. Like, people might buy it. Um, that's a skill that Quill has that I, I definitely don't have. He can, he can do a lot of coding. He's got a history of it, and he participates in Ludum Dare, like, all the time. I'm looking forward to seeing him. He'll be at the event, by the way, in, uh, in Berkshire. It's the same location that we were at for the Hearts of Iron 4 event last June. So I can't wait to go there again. It was a gorgeous place there. They have really good service and it's funny because they, they serve a lot of really luxurious meals that it's like we had we had some food that was like you wouldn't want to have it every day, but they made us they gave it to us every day because <laughs> it was a special event. It's like, wow, okay. <laughs> anyway, we beat the dragon. I'm gonna wrap this thing up here. Um Tell me what your thoughts are, and I will look forward to seeing you again in the next video. And as always, See you soon.